Hi, I'm Justin, or as you might know me on Instagram, Aquawork. Today I'm going to show you a low-cost way to create and store RO water. We'll be using a four-stage RO DI filter, a float valve, a pressure-activated solenoid valve, and a 32-gallon trash can. So I'm going to make the hole for the cords high up on the container just above one of the handles. Just above the other handle, I'm going to drill the hole for the water line out. Uh, and between these two, I'm going to drill a hole for the float valve, but I'm going to make the hole lower in the container, placing the float valve about four inches below the other two holes. This will lower my capacity overall, but give me more margin for error as far as the water. Okay, so now we're going to install the float valve. The float valve has two nuts on it. The nut that actually fastens it to the wall of the container and the compression nut for the water line which will go on last. So to install the float valve, you'll need to make sure that the silicone washer is on the inside of the container against the wall, like so. Making sure that it's on all the way, you'll then install the nut. Now, these are plastic parts, so when you tighten the nut down with your tool, just give it a quarter turn or so. Don't over tighten it or it will break. Uh, and then you can thread your compression nut on. And that's it. Okay, now it's time to install the pumps and the heater, starting with the heater. So, Thread the cord through the hole that was made for the cords, like so, and place the heater right in the middle of the container. Then we'll add the circulation pump again, threading the cord through, and then we'll place it right next to the heater. So next we'll add the pump for the water line out. Again I'm going to thread the cord through, but instead of placing the pump on the bottom of the container, I'm going to place it slightly higher up on the wall of the container so that when the water level goes down it'll stay above the heater so the heater won't run dry. For the water line out, I'm going to use this clear vinyl tubing. I'm going to run a piece long enough from the pump to reach the wall of the container, at which point I'll install this brass elbow. The elbow will keep the water line outside of the container from kinking. So your, your container will need to be stored near an accessible water source, and in my case, near electrical outlets to power the pumps and the heater. So I'll be placing mine in the kitchen and using the cold water line under the sink. Right, so now that I have my container placed in the kitchen, I need to run a water line to it. So I'm going to use the cold water line under my kitchen sink. And because I want to still be able to use my kitchen sink, as well as the RO, I need to use a T-valve. This T-valve is 3 8 NPT threaded, which is what my sink setup uses. It's not the same for everyone, so make sure you do your research there. This T-valve also uses a push-to-fit system for the uh, one-quarter water line to the RO system. So now to install the T-valve, we first need to turn off the water and disconnect the line to the sink. So with the water off, I'll grab my wrench here and undo the line to the sink. <clears throat> this valve is nice in that it has rubber washers attached to it so you don't really need to use any uh, Teflon tape or anything like that to prevent it from leaking. 
I'm just going to tighten that onto there. And doesn't need to be crazy tight, just going to snug it up. And then I'll reattach my line to the sink. Again, just sort of snugging it up. If you over tighten it, it will leak. All right, so now I'm going to close the line out valve, dry things off a little bit, and turn the water back on and see if we get any leaks. Okay. All right, so now with my three lines, I'm going to start by connecting the water supply line into the RO filter. And it's a push to fit system, so pretty easy. Press the line in, push it till it clicks, give it a tug, and, and it should be connected. Okay, so now that I have my, my line into the filter, I'm going to run my clean water RO line out of the filter into the auto shut off valve on the screw side of the valve, which is opposite of the side that says in. And the other end of that is going to run to the float valve. And then my wastewater line, just gonna run from the flow restrictor on top of the filter, is going to run to the fitting labeled in. And then the line to the drain will run from that. The RO has been running all night and as you can see the water has filled up to the float valve and turned off i'm going to take the lid off here and fill up a bucket to demonstrate the pump so i have the pump hooked up to this line out and the pump is connected to an outlet switch down there so when I hit the switch on the pump, the bucket pulls up. So one important thing I should note is if you have the line longer than this below and it dips below the water line, it can create sort of a siphon effect. So after you turn the pump off, the water will still come out. Um, I just made sure that the line that I cut is above the water line so that that doesn't happen. So as this bucket fills up, the float valve will dip back down. And you can see now The water is coming out of the float valve. Well, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below, or you can contact me on my Instagram, AquaWork. I'm also going to include a list of supplies and links down below, um, as well as a diagram at the end of the video for the plumbing.